Hi everyone and welcome to the final Enactus Career Careers webinar of 2015. I'm Heather, manager of Enactus Careers here at Enactus Canada. Before we jump into the content today, I just wanted to quickly bring your attention to a few upcoming um, opportunities happening at the Enactus Canada National Exposition May 11th to 13th. All of the career stuff will happen on the 12th. Um, and first we do have the Donor Information and Career Opportunity Fair. Um, and this is happening again May 12th from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. noon. Um, and I'll just show you quickly all of the donors that will be there to meet and greet with you. So we have Capital One Canada, TD Bank Group, Walmart Canada Corporation, Scotiabank, Unilever Canada, Business Development Bank of Canada, RBC Royal Bank, KPMG LLP, 3M Canada, Crossmark Canada Inc., Enterprise, Loblaw Companies Limited, Robert Half, and TELUS. So be sure to bring your resumes um, to hand out to the recruiters that are there to meet you. Also on May 12th, there will be on-site interviews hosted, uh, hosted and TD Bank Group will be hosting informational interviews uh, and targeted interviews will be hosted by Capital One uh, Canada, Scotiabank and Unilever Canada. Um, for more information on exactly what the positions are um, and how to apply, uh, please visit the Enactus Canada Talent Community and the link is provided uh, below for you there. Uh, reminder, the application deadline for these interviews is Sunday, April 26th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so be sure to get your applications in for these interviews. Um, the other exciting activity that will be happening on May 12th are personal development workshops hosted by a few of our corporate and organizational partners. Uh, Business Development Bank of Canada will be teaching you how to perfect your elevator pitch, your LinkedIn profile, and your networking skills. Um, RBC Royal Bank will be, be presenting a brand you presentation, uh, which talks about the effect social media can have on your career. Uh, Enterprise will also be there covering resume tips and online application tricks. And finally, TELUS will be touching on those key interview skills. Um, so all of these are great opportunities for you to get connected to our corporate and organizational partners at the Enactus Canada National Exposition. Um, so now that we've kind of covered those housekeeping items for the National Exposition, uh, I would like to welcome Christina. Uh, Christina is a talent acquisition specialist supporting finance at Loblaw Companies Limited. Um, she started with the company in 2013 and has been in her current role for just over a year. She has her undergraduate degree in psychology from the University of Guelph and a postgraduate uh, post degree sorry, from Sheridan College in Human Resources Management. Uh, with Loblaw, she has also uh, also takes an active role in supporting the Enactus Canada and, and Loblaw's partnership. Uh, and you may have had a chance to meet and greet with her at the past couple years at our career fairs. So welcome, Christina. Thank you, Heather. I'm, uh, it's wonderful to be here today, and I'm looking forward to sharing some tips and tricks with the uh, Enactus student community and um, hoping to set them up for success on their networking endeavors and on their in interview, um, in future interviews. Amazing. Um, so let's jump right into the content of today's webinar. Um, again, today is the, the focus is on proper follow up. Uh, we'll walk you through each area uh, to show how to initiate, grow uh, and nurture your network with proper follow up over um, the long term. So I'll just pull up the agenda for you today. So there's six key areas that uh, Heather and I are going to be covering today. Um, so number one, the importance of following up, different ways to follow up, timelines on when to follow up, um, how to get what you want out of that networking or relationship, maintaining those relationships over the long term, and then the application of those concepts. So first we're going to talk about following up or the importance of following up. Um, perfect. So why is it so important to follow up after an interview or after a networking event? Um, follow up after an interview, it really only increases your chances of landing the job. It shows the recruiter, it also shows the recruiter that you're still interested in the job after the interview process. 
Um, it's important to follow up after a networking event because of the great connections you can make and keep through those. Uh, remember that when you have made a connection with someone, you've made a connection with their entire network and vice versa. Uh, so you really don't wanna miss out on that opportunity. It may also be important to know that majority of people don't follow up in the first place. Um, they're either scared to say the wrong thing or they may think that it's not necessary for them to follow up. Yeah, a well-crafted, organized follow-up after an interview or networking event can show that you're engaged. Um, it lets the person on the other end know that you valued the time that they spent with you and you see a mutually beneficial relationship being fostered. Um, similar to what Heather mentioned um, about increasing your chances of, um, of landing that position, um, keep in mind that you are competing with hundreds of other applicants so that are just like you. So if you can do, um, if you can follow up in a professionally engaging manner, um, you're instantly doing one thing that's going to set you aside or set you apart from your, your competition. Um, which leads us to our next point on different ways to follow up. Um, so the main ways to follow up are, uh, you know, via email, uh, a phone call or a LinkedIn message. Um, however, try differentiating yourself and sending a handwritten letter um, sent by, you know, snail mail. Uh, not a lot of people do this anymore, so it would definitely stand out amongst the other candidates. Yeah, I actually had a candidate recently, and I can say this is probably one of the only candidates in the last year that has sent a, a personalized um, snail mail um, handwritten letter. And I can tell you that definitely I'm going to rem remember the candidate's name. I'm going to remember exactly what position they apply to. Um, and if they connect with me in the future, um, it's just going to set them apart from, from other candidates and makes that lasting impression. Mm -hmm. Um, and we do have a few examples for you today. Uh, keep in mind the examples that we're going to share are definitely like an email format that you would send. Um, but no matter out what outlet you use to follow up, all of the, the basis of your content should be the same. So kind of uh, tweak the, the examples that we've given today towards a, a voicemail you might leave on someone's phone or uh, that handwritten letter that you might send. send. Um, main thing is to be organized, be clear, and be concise. Uh, leave the conversation with a call to action um, when you're following up. Uh, it's uh, uh, as often, you know, it's appropriate without coming across as overbearing or self-centered. So here's an example of an e a follow-up email that you can send. And um, so, dear Bobette. Um, thank you for meeting with me on March 2nd for the head Smurf position. I appreciate the time you took to highlight the key projects um, uh, projects I would be involved in and feel like I'd be a good candidate based on my experience managing financial projects on the Enactus team. I look forward to hearing back from you, Jennifer. Now to move on to timelines and what to expect. As a general rule, it's always good to um, to follow up within 24 to 48 hours after an interview or a networking event. Um, in an interview setting, it's important to always ask the recruiter about their timelines and follow those accordingly. Um, you should always uh, follow up with a thank you email, phone call, LinkedIn message, or handwritten letter. Um, however, if the recruiter says that they're going to follow up in two weeks, um, simply send them that thank you letter and then wait for the two weeks to pass. Uh, if they haven't followed up with you in those two weeks, it's a great chance for you to then uh, and then follow up with them and don't hesitate to follow up after that two weeks. Um, keep in mind that you are not the only candidate that they're interviewing and it's not the only open position. Well, recruiters take every effort to ensure that you feel um, uh, feel this way. Their best intentions are to stick with timelines, um, but sometimes these timelines can be delayed by unexpected business changes, illnesses, um, or unexpected constraints on the hiring manager's time. Uh, send a quick reminder email or phone call is always welcome um, and never seen as intrusive. So as long as you're not following up every day or every hour, uh, uh, don't hesitate to do that. Yeah, timing can definitely be everything. Um, if you're following up immediately after the interview, like within minutes, 
you may be sending the message um, that you're coming across a bit canned or insincere. Um, you should be taking a bit of time to reflect on the conversation that you had, um, the details that were shared in the conversation about the company and the role itself and how you can fit the bill. So the structure of the email is also going to be important, like Heather mentioned. Um, it should be short and to the point, but it should also have substance. Um, so you want to keep it organized. You know, you don't want to have one giant paragraph, maybe an opening with a few bullet points on why you would be a, a good fit and then a closing. Um, it just makes it easier to read and comes across less burdensome. burdensome. Um, also want to watch for spelling and either read the email out loud before you send it or have a, a friend or family member look it over. Another useful tip during the interview process um, is to also, and don't feel um, that you can't bring something into the interview. I always recommend, you know, write down a few points on why you would be a good fit or some follow up questions on a piece of paper. And, um, you know, it's, it just serves as a reminder and isn't going to throw off the interview. Um, just keep in mind that if there are any tests either before or after the interview, you want to make sure that you're putting them away. You don't want um, the interviewer to call into question what you have on that paper. Mm -hmm. It's like your cheat sheet in exam time. You can't have that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so kind of now moving on to how to get what you want out of the relationships that you have built, whether that's through um, an interview that you've had or uh, a, a networking event that you've attended. Um, it's important always to keep your long term goal in mind. So what do you want out of a relationship um, and know that it's uh, what you want isn't necessarily going to happen right away. Um, initially, you want to focus on them and make sure that your goal is to help them get what they want. If, if you're able to help them in that area. Um, get to know uh, who they are and how they got started in their position. Don't be afraid to share your goals and career objectives as well. Um, but asking uh, for the position right off the bat may not be the best approach. Although I have heard of this happening and that does and is kind of the, uh, the, the main reason for the career opportunity fair at the National Exposition. Um, but just in general for networking events, maybe not something you want to start off with. Uh, developing the relationship in baby steps uh, is definitely the best way to go uh, to get that long term goal. Yeah, and on the point of making that long term connection and finding mutual um, benefit out of the relationship. Um, I recently listened to a TED talk by Kara Anderson, who is a journalist, speaker and advocate for adopting a mutually benef uh, mutuality mindset and becoming an opportunity maker for others. And her message nicely sums up the foundation of a networking relationship. Um, and I firmly believe, uh, and most networking gurus would agree this, that this approach um, will win out every time. Um, another- We've actually, sorry, just quickly, we do, we will add that link to the, um, the TED Talk for you guys to take a look at. And um, my colleague, uh, another example, my colleague actually recently shared a nice story with me um, about a new hire she met six months back at one of our networking events. And uh, number one, this candidate made an impression at the networking event by asking engaging questions and um, coming across as genuinely interested in the company. Um, he also took her advice and took the time to stay connected uh, with the colleague through uh, regarding future opportunities. And um, this example just speaks to the fact that, you know, patience is going to be important in building the relationship towards the opportunity um, and opportunities might not just happen overnight. Um, so here is another example we would like to share with you. Um, so it's actually the next one on the screen. One second. Perfect. Um, and this example is more suitable for after a networking event versus interview. Uh, but it's important to be able to get a feel for the relationship to see if it's appropriate. So obviously, case by case, these examples will change and it's not a cut and paste example by any means. Um, every person is different and some may appreciate these things uh, a bit more than others. So dear uh, Bobetta, I am glad we had the opportunity to connect at the Enactus Canada National Exposition on May 12th. It's such a small world that we both grew up in the same area. 
After speaking with you, uh, I was interested to hear about the CSR that Smurf Blue Limited uh, implements and some of the green initiatives that you are directly supporting. From our conversation, it sounds like you are very busy wrapping up with the project. When things slow down for you, it would be great to talk more uh, with you about how to get involved in this interesting industry. Uh, there's a great coffee shop in your area called Smurf's Coffee. Let me know what your schedule is like at the beginning of June. I look forward to hearing from you. Um, and just uh, just another point that we like to make about uh, these examples as, is that they all end with a call to action. So it's not just a, um, uh, it was great to meet you. It was, uh, it was great to meet you. <clears throat> What's the next step to continue this relationship? Um, so just keep that in mind when you are following up, of course, uh, the, the call to action is always very important. And uh, another tip to keep the conversation going is to reach out to them when similar events come up to the one that you've connected with them at originally. Um, it's, you know, either to ask them if they're attending the event or if they want to attend the event with you. Um, it's a, le a less direct approach to extending an offer of coffee and a good way to, um, you know, help develop that relationship to lead up to that conversation about coffee. Mm -hmm. And that leads to our next point of um, maintaining those relationships that you've built. Right. So keeping keeping people in your network over a long period of time um, is a very important thing to do. Uh, it may take a little bit more effort on your end, but it has a huge and can have a huge payoff um, in the end. You never know when you will want to lean on your network for different opportunities like job searching um, or fundraising for a certain event, things like that. And another great tip to um, help you execute maintaining the relationship, um, if you've already had a few uh, initial contact connections with someone, um, keep an eye on their LinkedIn network and um, see if they've recently received a promotion or if they've joined a new group or maybe they've accepted another uh, a new job. Um, it makes uh, and, and make it a little bit more personalized than just liking or leaving a comment. Um, actually connect with them through a personal message um, and, uh, you know, create um, also, you know, send a, you can also, another way would be to send a message or a handwritten letter to share an article that they might be interested in or a magazine that they might be interested in um, based on the connections that you've pre previously shared. Um, that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Um, another great thing about uh, these type of follow-ups is, again, not a lot of people do them. Um, so you're already ensuring that you're going to stand out um, from a crowd. And how many of us have ever been annoyed by someone, uh, you know, commenting or saying something on LinkedIn? Usually we like those type of things because it kind of boosts us in a way. Um, another great way to manage these relationships and ensuring that you're kind of keeping on top of things um, is through spreadsheets or setting reminders on your calendar or on your phone. Um, find a system that works for you that's going to remind you uh, when you want to send follow-ups with certain people. And another good way to look at your network is through primary, uh, secondary, and tertiary networks. So you want to be strategic about your network. The 500 connections that you have on LinkedIn, um, a lot of these are going to be part of your tertiary network. And you are probably going to stay connected with them more through, um, you know, peripheral follow up like your um, you know, posting status updates or sharing articles, that kind of thing, um, versus you want to stay more connected with um, your primary and secondary network. Those, so these people you're going to engage in person, um, engage more on a regular basis through social media, um, and they're going to help you directly with your goals as you may be helping them directly with their goals. Um, your secondary network may consist of individuals outside of your industry or outside of your specific area of focus, um, but they're nevertheless important uh, building blocks to your overall network. Mm -hmm. um, and as especially as cross collaboration comes into play, um, it is more important, uh, especially as it's more important in organizations. Um, having those broader connections outside of your industry or area of focus are going to be seen as more valuable to your organization um, or groups. So, uh, which, and we'll touch on that a little bit later in the webinar. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so overall, I think that you really want to be selective on who is in your network um, and ensuring that, again, going back to that mutual beneficial relationship. Um, you also want to engage, you know, maybe in a little bit of spring cleaning. Uh, your network is a representation of you. Um, and if you suddenly find that someone on your LinkedIn is, let's say, spamming your newsfeed or posting unprofessional content um, and just isn't adding any value to you, um, it may be time to kind of part ways with that person that's in your network. So now we're going to look at another example of maintain, uh, maintaining your relationships um, through email, um, LinkedIn, or a personalized letter. So dear Bobette, hope you are doing well. I just wanted to touch base and see how you're doing. I remember from our last conversation, you were planning a trip to Europe. I hope you had a great time. I'm thinking of planning a European adventure myself. Any tips on must-see spots you would recommend? I see that you have recently moved into a new role, and funny enough, I just read an article that I think you might find interesting. I am curious to see what, you're, what you think of it and how you think it is going to uh, affect Smurf Blue stocks. I found it interesting, especially in light of the recent events at Smurf's Palace. Kind regards, Jennifer. Um, and this is an example of ending with a call to action. You're not just leaving the conversation off with a, you know, it was, it's nice to connect again. You're actually um, setting up an opportunity to further uh, engage in conversation with them. Awesome. So we have already covered a lot of great content today, um, but now let's touch on how you can apply these really great concepts um, either today in your uh, Anactus career, I'll call it, um, or your, uh, you know, later on in your in your more professional career when you do start that career. Um, so try applying these concepts. Um, with other, maybe it's departments in your school to recruit for your Enactus a team. Enactus team. Um, if you're a business student, try attending an engineering or an arts event to start making connections with potential members. Um, or try attending a community event to connect with potential fundraisers. Um, remember our point, though, that um, you want to obviously have your, your goal in mind of getting them as a member on your team or getting them as a fundraiser to your organization, um, but you don't want to come off too strong right away. So your first interaction with them is probably not going to be like, hey, we would like you to donate to us or we would like you to be on your team. Um, it's, it's more of a, a, a relationship that you need to build, again, getting what you want maybe a little bit later down the road. And the same concept as you move on uh, in your professional career after your your studies and your career within Actis, um, these same concepts can be translated into uh, a work environment. Um, so networking definitely doesn't stop once you you move into your professional career. Um, it is important for your career growth and development that you continue to maintain those networks and, um, you know, network within the company. So connecting yourself with people who have held your position maybe a year prior is going to help you, um, as well as putting yourself in positions to support um, and work alongside senior leaders on projects or joining different clubs in the organization or different initiatives is going to allow you to connect with colleagues outside of your department. Um, and is really going to help you add value to, to your career and to the organization as well. Mm -hmm. I think all of that is really great insight, especially as um, our students are transitioning into the into the, the real world, I'll call it. <laughs> I usually reference it as that. Um, all right, so ba that basically closes off our webinar today. Um, so just to kind of leave you with, remember the importance of following up, um, whether it's after an interview or a networking opportunity, really being able to nurture that relationship, the relationships that you've built from those events. Um, can really have a huge payoff at the end of the day. Um, and if you guys have any great networking tips that you have found have worked for you, uh, please feel free to post those in the comment box below. We would love to, to, to hear those um, and to be shared with everyone. Um, so again, thank you so much everyone for tuning in today. And finally, I just wanted to thank Christina from, from Loblaws uh, for coming in and attending today's webinar and adding such great insight um, to the topic. So thank you. Thank you so much, Heather. It was um, really nice to be welcomed to the Enactus office and have an opportunity to, to share some airtime with you. <laughs> um, I've always really admired um, the Enactus organization. 
and uh, the students truly live out the Enactus mandate in everything that they do. And it's really, truly an honor to be here. And uh, I look forward to hearing more from the Enactus student community at the upcoming nationals. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see everybody at the National Expo. Bye. Bye.